everybody. So today we learned about why it is that we yawn. And for our craft, if you missed it, we did um, a little representation of someone yawning, a little fun representation. And this is also an opportunity for us to learn about angles. You'll see why. So if um, you're a little bit older and maybe you've already learned about angles in school, or if you wanna try with us, it might be fun to bring a protractor along too. So go ahead and grab a protractor if you're interested in learning about that part. If not, we'll just make a fun um, yawning craft. So you'll need three paper plates, and it's actually better the thinner the plates are that you have. So even thinner than this would be best. You'll need some colored tissue paper, and if you don't have colored tissue paper, uh, you can paint the plate or color it in with a marker. I'll be using tissue paper. We'll need glue, scissors, a blank piece of paper, ruler, and a pen. Now the pen should be soft, so this is kind of more of a marker. We don't want something that's going to rip the paper because we're going to be drawing on the tissue paper, so you just don't want something that is going to rip it. Um, so go ahead and grab your stuff and join me back here while we make our little yawning person. First thing we're going to need to do um, is take one of our plates and find the middle point. So the best way for us to find the middle point, unless we were to measure everything, is to fold it into four pieces. So we're going to fold it once this way and once this way. So go ahead and do that with me. And it's important that we fold it exactly in the middle. So how you know it's exactly in the middle is that the two edges line up. Okay. And then go ahead and crease it down. Once you know that you folded it perfectly, go ahead and crease. And then we're going to fold from here, again, all the way down. Make sure it lines up. It's a little tricky if your plate's thicker, but it's still possible. So all of the edges should be at the same point. There's not one side longer than the other ones. And then we go ahead and crease it all down. Now, we're going to cut a tiny, tiny edge of this. Just a little bit like that. And watch. When we open it up, there's a circle. And now we know where the middle of our plate is. So now we're going to put tissue paper on our plates and that just makes it a little more fun. It's gonna be different colors. You'll see, it'll all make sense. But first, you're gonna grab some tissue paper. Again, if you don't have tissue paper, maybe you'll want to color your plate with a marker or paint. But I'm gonna grab this tissue paper. It's so big. So instead of using the whole thing, what I'm going to do is cut just around the plate. I'll show you. So I'll take my scissors, just because it's annoying to have to deal with so much of this tissue paper. Okay, now see, we just have a little bit of extra. Did I say toilet paper, tissue paper? Okay, now we can cut even closer. We don't wanna cut the exact size of the plate, we just wanna cut a little bit extra because we're going to wrap the tissue paper around the plate just so it's nice and neat. It doesn't have to be perfect. You won't see this side. Okay, so some of you out there might have plates that are um, flat. If yours is like mine and it has a dip in it, we're going to glue the tissue paper to the side that dips down. So we're not gonna glue it on the back side, we're gonna glue it on this side. Okay, so you can grab your glue stick or your um, liquid glue if you have that instead. And just glue everywhere on the edges, inside the plate, lots of glue. Once you have your glue everywhere, we're going to take our tissue paper, I almost said toilet paper again, 
and it's really tricky because it's so thin and fragile so you don't want to get it all sticky somewhere be careful how you press it down because there's going to be so many wrinkles see i already got some wrinkles so be gentle where you, how you push it down And then you want to push it down around the sides too. And if any of the glue got off, you just want to glue some more on. And just push it really neatly and tightly so that it almost looks like your plate was always supposed to be this color. Okay, so once you're done pressing all of the tissue paper down nice and flat, you'll probably have some edges like I do. So we're going to flip it over and just glue on the outside. And this just makes it look neat so that um, there's tissue paper everywhere. There's no ragged edges on the other side, see? Nice and neat. So again, if you don't have, did I say toilet paper again? If you don't have tissue paper, um, go ahead and use a marker, or paint, whatever you have. It just won't look so good if both plates are still white. Hey, you might even have different color plates and it's less work for you. Do you think this is so sticky? For me, the tissue paper is so sticky. It's all over my fingers. There's my red plate. Now I'm gonna make my pink plate. So it's the exact same thing. I wonder what colors you're using. I'm using red and pink. So again, I'm just going to cut it so that it's almost as big as the plate, but a little bigger. So that it can wrap around. And I'll go ahead and do this and join me again when you have both your plates finished. And then when we take this off of our plate, we have a perfect middle point, which we'll need for the next step. We need it on both plates. So go ahead and do the same on your second plate. Just filling this in. There we go, we can say bye to this plate now. Now, if you've learned about circles already, you know that this is the circumference of the circle. This, from one point to another point, straight through, that's the diameter. And that half of it, so from the middle point to the edge, is called a radius. If you didn't know about that, now you know. We have circumference, diameter, and radius, which is half of the diameter. So we're going to need to take our ruler to find the radius of our circle. So what that means is we're going to take the edge of our ruler into the middle of our middle circle. So when you have the ruler, you don't want it to be exactly in the middle because you have to account for your pen too. So you want it to be just beside it, the middle point, right? I'm sure you know how to use a ruler. So I'm going to draw from here. Oh, it moved. It's hard to do it like this there. So I'm going to draw from here to the edge of my plate. And you'll see. So there's my radius of my circle. I'm going to go ahead and do the second one now too. Some tissue paper. So again, ruler in the middle of the center point. 
And then taking this and drawing it all the way down in a straight line. So we have two radiuses now. Now, oh, my pen just broke. That was weird. Okay. With our scissors, we're going to cut the radius. So start in what edge and just cut as exactly as you can on this line that we just drew. Again, it's harder if you have a thicker plate, but you can still do it. And you're going to stop when you reach the middle of that circle. Then you should be able to open. And again, with the red one, or whatever color you're using, do the exact same thing, cutting it along that line. Now we have two. So, ready to see how this turns into a mouth? Basically, you have to fit them like this. So the two, let's call them mouth, have to go into each other like this. So, I don't know how to describe it. You'll feel it out. So they have to line up the two openings and then the one of them just keeps going down until it reaches the other side. So now it kind of looks like we just have one plate. I'll do it one more time. This one, they're both facing forward. You don't want this one to face this way and this one this way. They're both facing this way. And then the two go into each other like this. And then, it's like you have one plate, but here's the fun part. <laughs> have you ever seen Pac-Man? If you've seen Pac-Man, that video game, that's what this looks like to me. It's like he can eat something. Okay, now let's make it look even more like a mouth. We're going to do that by adding teeth. <laughs> this is just for fun, just to make it look like a mouth. So let's get our paper. And we're going to make with our paper just some little rectangles like this. Little rectangle. So something that might help is cutting a big line, not all the way, just a big line like this. And then just do, letting them fall off little rectangles. You don't have to add teeth if you don't want to. It just helps it look a little bit more like a mouth. Okay, now we have to imagine that we're putting the teeth on. So it doesn't make sense if we put the teeth on the red on both sides because it would get covered. So we're going to have to put on the one side that has this open flap, we'll have to put teeth here and then teeth here. So do it with me. We'll start by with this one, the smaller part, whatever that color is for you. My pink. We're going to put a line of glue right at the edge of his mouth. Then we're going to go ahead and stick some of our teeth So they're facing down. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I might need to put some more glue. So just put some teeth so that they're facing down. I'm gonna put one more, one more tooth. Okay, here's the top teeth. 
Now it's time for the bottom teeth. I need some more rectangles. If you don't find you have enough teeth, go ahead and make a few more. Okay. So, line of glue on this side. And now we want our teeth not facing down, we want them facing up. Let's start on this side this time. It's a crooked tooth. There we go. I think I have just enough rectangles. Okay, now we have, it looks like you could eat something, but you just don't want to clamp it down too much if you have your teeth. And now, to make it look like a creature, we're going to just add an eye somewhere around here. Just a circle. Oh, my cat says hi. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna add a circle around the eye. There's my creature. And he yawns. Okay, cat. So, we can make him yawn. You can also make him be crunching on things, but also we can say he's doing Isn't that cute? Okay. Now the fun part, <laughs> if you wanna make this into something where we can learn about math, well, we already learned about radius and diameter. But we can actually try to measure the angle that he's yawning at. Well, nobody could ever yawn that big up to their eyeball, but let's pretend they could. So, if you know how to use your protractor, go ahead. If not, I'll give you a little um, sneak peek. My cat is still here. He loves this craft. So, um, a protractor measures the angle of a triangle. So, when we open up our... Okay, you have to go. <laughs> when we open up our... Um, friend's mouth here, we're making a triangle, see? So every time we have a triangle, we have an angle here, what's called an angle. Angles are measured in degrees. And a protractor measures how many degrees of the angle we have. So as you can see, this is a circle itself, a half circle. So a half circle, let's make a half circle. A half circle is 180 degrees. Half of a half circle half, is 90 degrees. And that is a straight edge. So if you see, not the teeth, but the line underneath, if you see, let me make sure it's perfect for a second. There we go. If you see, that's a straight edge. What that means is this line and this line hit each other um, in a straight 90 degree angle way. So, um, okay, let's see like a picture frame, for example. Oh, piece of paper, piece of paper. Every straight edge like this, that's 90 degrees. It would look funny if your piece of paper look like that. You would say, hey, that's not a straight edge. That's not 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is a straight edge. 
Okay. So how we measure it is that we we will be putting um, at the bottom of his mouth, the bottom of our protractor. So if you see, it goes zero, zero from here, zero to 180, but there's also a zero to 180 in here too. There's two lines for me. I don't know what yours looks like. Do you see? Here. So we want to put our protractor this bottom line where the bottom of his mouth is. And mine has a nice little circle. I hope yours does too. So that we can line this circle up with our middle circle. So now we see right here how the bottom of the mouth and the zero line are lined up. And the, and the middle point and this middle point are lined up. So that's how I could measure 90 degrees. It's not exact because I've moved it. Do you see the 90? Right? <laughs> right here it says 70, 80, 90. So what I want to do is make sure that this line is in line with the 90 line. Do you see how here, let me move it. I just moved it off a bit. What is it now? It's not 90. Oh, it's backwards. In the camera. Which number is that line hitting? It's hitting mm, 80 three degrees, which means it's too small. So if we want to make it 90 degrees, we have to open it up a bit more until it's hitting 90 again. There we go. Now you can try around with different numbers. Like if you wanted to make it 100 degrees, you move it a bit bigger. 45 degrees is half of 90. So let me try to make this half of 90. We'll see how accurate I am. There's 90. Let's move it half of 90. Okay, let's see. I did, oh, I did 44 degrees. There we go, that's 45. Anyway, so this can be a fun uh, tool for you to learn about angles and try out your protractor, protractor testing it. Um, and if you haven't learned about protractors yet, this can just be a fun, <laughs> way to remember how and why we yawn. Thank you so much for doing the craft with me today. I hope you had fun.